Now to the story of three Texas ladies, high school pals in the 70s, then Facebook friends, who've now become amateur detectives. They're investigating the disappearance and possible murder of another old friend from high school. Two of them are here to tell their story. But first, here's 48 Hours mystery correspondent Maureen Maher. Back in 1977, the high-kicking all-stars of Mesquite High School were on top of the world. And for vivacious girls, the drill team was it. When you're at Mesquite High School, that's <laughs> the big time. And right at the center of it all was a firecracker named Lisa Stone. Lisa had um, real high kicks. There she is. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at yeah. Lisa was just very full of life, very energetic, bubbly person, just a lot of fun. 30 years later, the girls had a reunion. After the party, Facebook kept the old gang together. Well, we talked on Facebook every day, yeah. um, you know, and Lisa loved to talk. So <laughs> if she wasn't on Facebook, um, she was chatting me on Yahoo or she was calling or, or texting. Until last summer when Lisa disappeared. I noticed I hadn't talked to her in about two weeks. I wasn't terribly concerned. I thought maybe she had lost her internet. A neighbor filed a missing persons report. Police checked it out, but Lisa's partner said that Lisa was away. The cops seemed to have more pressing cases, and there was no sign of a crime. So nothing happened. That just made us even more determined that we were not going to let this die. Using Facebook and a lot of nerve, these ladies have taken matters into their own hands. They've done searches, handouts, vigils, and even a billboard. We're just hoping and praying that someone will come forward. But most of all, they've kept the case alive. We won't rest until this is solved, one way or another. Lisa Stone's friends, Tina Wiley and Tammy Markle, are here with us this morning. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good to morning. see you. So do you have an operating theory as to what happened to her at this stage of the game? Well, it just was very strange that we had lots of activity from her on Facebook, and then one, the next day she was gone. I mean, there was just nothing there. So, uh, you know, naturally when, when someone disappears like that, you think that, they've something has happened they've been a victim of foul play of some kind so that's what our theory is where does the investigation stand now and what type of assistance are you now getting dpd is heavily um, involved in this investigation um, i believe they are following every every lead they have um, there was a long period that went by before they became involved about a month at least um, before we got them to reopen the case so i feel like they lost some valuable time but I think that we have found a lot of clues on Facebook that we have offered them, and I think that they have found a lot of things themselves. How disappointed were you that it did take so long? Because you did go to the police a number of times with some somewhat legitimate information, maybe not as legitimate in their eyes, but for yeah. you, knowing that there was a, a problem here and they really didn't, didn't take it to heart at first. Well, it was very frustrating, um, and we were, we were scared. We were terrified that something bad had happened to her. And... So I think that, you know, after we kept pushing and prodding them and, and went to them with uh, our timeline of, of information that we had gathered, you know, that's what finally made them open the case. At what point did you decide that, you know what, we need to become investigators here and really help move this along? I think I did just from day one as soon as um, I had a few clues that something was amiss, but when I would try to call Lisa, her phone was disconnected and I thought it was because of financial reasons. Um, so things started adding up, and then when I heard that the neighbor had turned in the missing persons report and the police closed after five days, immediately I just took action. Now you had been following, trailing I guess you want to say, uh, the woman that Lisa had been living with. Mm -hmm. And at one point you saw her disposing of some of Lisa's belongings in a dumpster right. while driving Lisa's car. Yes. Right. While also she was lying to you about her whereabouts. Yes, correct. Yes. Did that... Then that, the light bulb go off that at that point? That was a huge, mm -hmm. a huge day, a very devastating day. Um, Tammy and I were on the phone with Joni that day, and the girlfriend had told the story that she was going to pick up Lisa, and instead Joni saw her on the road and followed her, and followed her to the dumpster. While the three of us were on the phone, Joni was, we all started crying. We knew when she mm -hmm. saw those items, Lisa's birth certificate, the late brother's death certificate, everything that meant anything to Lisa was dumped in the dumpster. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think, do you ever worry about your own personal safety? Uh, yes, most definitely we do. Thankfully, I live in a gated community, so yeah. that gives me a little bit of peace of mind. But, but yes, I mean, we're dealing with some, uh, obviously, people with no conscience. Yeah. Now that the police are a little more heavily involved, what is, what's your role now? What are you continuing to do? 
Well, we're continuing what we've done up to this point. We've still uh, got a Facebook page. We've started a nonprofit organization uh, for the love of Lisa.org. And um, we've done billboards. Uh, we've got a park bench that was dedicated uh, in Lisa's honor uh, in the Mesquite area where we went to high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we're, we're constantly talking to people. We're doing searches. Okay. Ladies, thank you for coming in and talking with us. Tina Wiley, Tammy Markle, we wish you the best of luck. Thanks thank so much.